Suppose we have a large collection of data values. For example, all of the grades in, in this class or the population of the 50 states or something like that. Um, so far, we would have to create a variable to hold each value and give each of those variables a different name. But sometimes we just want to treat that whole collection of data as a collection, as a single variable. And C provides us a way to do that, and it's called the array. So an array in C is a collection of values, like we've shown here. And an array has a lot of several characteristics. First is that all of the elements of the array, all of the data in the collection, must be of the same type. So we can have an array of integers, an array of doubles, an array of cars. We can't mix types within a single collection. Second, the way that we talk about individual elements of the array is by index. So if I have this collection of eight integers, here we see the different values in my collection, and here we see the index of where that value fits within the collection. So we have element 0, element 1, element 7, element 5, and we can access and talk about that data element using its index. The third thing that um, is important about arrays is that they're allocated as one chunk of contiguous memory. So we know that if I allocate eight integers in an array, it's going to begin at a particular address and it's going to end at a particular address and all eight integers will, will occupy space in that memory one right after the other. So they're contiguous in memory. And finally, an array is fixed size. So when we allocate an array, we tell how big we want that array to be, and that never changes. That's the amount of data we're given, and that's what we have to live with. <clears throat> so in order to allocate an array, um, we call it static allocation because we're declaring a variable just like we allocate a, an array uh, at compile time. And so when we create an array, we declare it, the type and a name, just like a, a regular variable declaration. But then we put these square brackets here and we indicate the size of the array that we want. So this type can be any type you want. All the elements of the array are going to be of that type. We'll give a name, it follows the same rules as any other variable name. And this size needs to be an integer value, can't have fractional parts of an array. And it must be known at compile time. The compiler is going to be the entity that's, that's responsible for allocating memory for this, so it needs to know how much memory to allocate. And so here's some examples. Uh, pop is an array of integers of 50 integers, right? Grades is an array that has 123 elements, and each of them is a double. What we can't do is something like this, where n is a variable. We can't allocate an array a of n integers because the compiler doesn't know what the value of n is. So this is not allowed. These are allowed. To access an array element, we use the array name, again the square bracket, square bracket, and then index. Which element of the array are we talking about? So it goes to that element, retrieves the value, or stores the value, and doesn't touch any other parts of the array. So this index must be an integer expression, right? But it's an expression, it can be variable, it doesn't have to be constant. It needs to fall from 0, between 0 and size minus 1. You notice before when we had 8 elements, the index went from 0 to 7. But there's no error checking, so the, uh, the compiler won't tell you if you access outside that array. That's a common source of bugs that you have to watch for. It will just do the compute computation of the address it needs and go get that data no matter where it happens to be, whether it's in the array or not. So be very careful about that, but it's an any integer expression can be used here. 
So for example, if I want to read element 3 of the pop array, this is how I do it, store it to x. If I want to change the value of element 15 of the pop array, I use this expression on the left hand side of the assignment. And here's a case where the index is an integer expression. It's a variable, right? I don't know what s is at compile time, but at runtime I can figure out which element I'm talking about, read it, add 50 to it, and store the result in y. Here's a couple of examples. The first one, we have our array of integers pop, and we want to compute the average of that. Well, the average is, might be a fractional value. So we create a variable double uh, called average, and we initialize it to zero. And then we walk through the array. We initialize an index. We're going to use this variable i to index into the array. And what do we want to do? We want to add element 0 and element 1, element 2 and element 3 and so on. So we put this in a loop and we make this variable. Instead of writing out pop 0 plus pop 1 plus pop 2 plus pop 3, that's no better than having different variable names for each one. So we have a loop. We initialize to element 0, index 0. We want our index to, to increase, but we want it to stop before it gets to 50. So we're going to have elements from 0 to 49, okay? And then we access each element, we add it to our average, and then at the end we divide that sum by 50 to get the average. This is a very common way to use arrays. We, we call this walking through the array. Start at element 0 and go to the end. Here's another example. Uh, in this case, I want to rotate the values that are in the element of the array pop. I want to rotate them up one position so that 49, the, the old 48 becomes the new element 49, the old element 47 becomes the old element 48, and so on. So I need to do this rotate. I'm going to overwrite element 49 with 48, so I need to save it in a temporary variable. Then again, I initialize a variable that I'm going to use as an index. So here I'm going to talk about element 49, 48, 47, 46, and so on, but not quite to zero. Okay, we're going to go stop when, as long as j is greater than zero, we're going to keep going and we're going to decrement j as we go along. Here we're going to take the old element j minus 1 and store it into element j. So 48 goes into 49, then 47 goes into 48, then 46 goes into 47, and so on. In the very last one, j is going to be 1, j minus 1 will be 0, so I take element 0 and store it in element 1. That's what this loop does. It moves everything up a position, and then I replace the 0th element with the last element in the array that I saved before. And when I declare an array, I have the opportunity to initialize it with data if I want to do that. This sometimes is common, sometimes it's not uh, very useful, uh, especially for large arrays. But here's how I can do it. I can declare an array, A of integers, size 3, and at de declaration time, this is not an assignment. You can't do this as an assignment. You can't assign something to an array and expect it to work. But at initialization time we can do this. And this says put this data in the first, in zeroth element, this in element 1, and this in element 2. So I'm going to, as the, the, when the compiler allocates this array, creates this array, it's also going to fill in the data values with these three values here. That's what this statement means, this declaration. Now what happens if the number over here, the size, doesn't line up with the number over here? Well, in this case I said B has 10 elements, but I've only given three initialization values. The compiler will fill in the rest of the array with zeros. So B will look like element 0 is 1, element 1 is 2, element 2 is 3, element 4 is 0, 5 is 0, 6 is 0, and so on, up to 10 elements. 
Now there's something of a shortcut. Sometimes, you know, I'm lazy. I don't like to, to, to type things or maybe I don't want to, um, for whatever reason, I say, okay, I want an array C. I don't want to say how big it is, but they're all integers and here's the values that I want to go into. And so the compiler will figure out, okay, one, two, three, four, five, there's five initialization values and so I will create an array of size five and initialize them like this. Okay, just showing you the possibilities here. Here's a case where D is 10 and I don't, and I say I want to initialize it, but I don't give you any values. Well, it's the same as this case here. I fill in with zeros. So this is a quick and easy way to get an array that's initialized to zero. But what you can't do is this. I can't say I'm going to create an array E. I won't tell you how big it is. Then the compiler doesn't know what to do. It can't do anything with this statement. So this is not allowed. But these are allowed ways to uh, both allocate an array and set the values to some initial values.